Welcome to the You Can't Handle the Emet podcast. Tonight, we have a seriously special guest, Michelle Blumenau, an incredible woman, and I'm going to leave most of the introduction up to Mish because she has put us on a very strict 30-minute time limit. And I'm not going to mess with Michelle because no one messes with Michelle. My name is Nicholas Ingle. I'm the host of this podcast. I'm an alcoholic. I've been sober for 13 years and the whole point of this show is to provide ordinary people for you to listen to to understand that you don't have to appear extraordinary in the public realm to be extraordinary mesh welcome to the show so mesh could you give us a little bit of a background on who you are and what your belief system are? What, what, what would you like to discuss on the show today um I've got a couple of things that I wouldn't mind talking about. Um, they're related to body positivity and health at every size, um, as well as intuitive eating. Um, I guess, uh, do you want me to just talk and see how Fire this away. goes? Absolutely. So tell us a little so, bit about who you are, your background, um, your beliefs, and how you came to the understanding of body positivity and health at every okay. size. Um, all right, so I was born quite a long time ago, and um, I believe that I was born fat. Some people are born thin, and some people are born fat. But um, the prevailing culture is that if you're fat, you should be thin, and you have to do whatever is necessary to become thin. Um, but that didn't work out very well. Um, you know, from I, I was thinking about it from me at I think I was about eight years old, I was taken to Weight Watchers. Um, this is, I'll just give any parent that has a fat child a tip. Don't do it. Don't put your children on a diet. It, it, it just didn't work out very well. Um, yeah, there's just, a, I mean, there's a lot of history to cover, but the bottom line is, um, yeah, it led to an eating disorder. And um, it taken me many years to, you know, realize that, the bottom line is diets don't work. Um, there is research to show that they've got a 95% failure rate over five years. So in other words, someone who goes on a diet, um, you know, might lose weight. Within five years, they are likely to put back that weight plus more. Now, there is no doctor, I don't believe, on earth that would ever recommend anything that has got a 95% failure rate. And yet, this is peddled as the solution. Just be thin. You know, eat less, eat less of this, eat only that, and you will acquire salvation. You know, it's a lie. It's simply a lie. Um, so, yeah, I just had a long journey to find things that are actually true. Um, and it's dieting is not true. That much I can tell you. I know, the, I know the gym is called MH, which is truth. It is not truth. No, well, we're, we're not dieting. We, we're definitely not a diet culture. Dieting is not truth. Dieting is not truth. You no. know, because, I mean, dieting leads people to believe that they are the problem. Where something with a 95% failure rate is actually the problem. You aren't the problem. The diet is the problem. I mean, what's going on is. Um, the deprivation causes a, like a biological backlash. So, I mean, you know, say you were going to go on a diet, you're starting on Monday, you know what Sunday looks like. Can't shuffle food fast enough in your face because biologically your body knows it's going to, you know, be hungry. The minute you come off the diet, I mean, if you can even stick to it, what will happen is you have the backlash where you can't stop shoveling things in your face because you stopped eating carbs, for instance, and your body needs carbs. It needs it. So this is just not a system that works. So, Mish, where does it, how long were you stuck in this diet life? Or? I probably bought into diet culture for around, I, I don't know, say 40 years, I don't know, 40, I don't know, 40 years, 45 years probably, you know, just try, you know, thinking I'm a failure and I have no willpower. And I mean, anyone who knows me, I mean, knows 
willpower is not my problem in life. I mean, I just said, I decide something and then I make it happen. But dieting was this area that just completely, you know, just total failure. It leads to poor self-esteem as well because you're a failure. You, you don't sort of fit the mold of what people want you to look like. Um, you can't seem to get there. So where does that lead to? Just fail. And I think it, it's, it perpetuates through everything. It's not just beauty magazines. It's not just movies or adverts. It's our healthcare system, our medical aid system. Um, the story that I love for you going for your vitality assessment and being told, you know, if you want to carry on that story, you know, and, and you're the only one of your friends who's not on any medication for health purposes and you're healthy. I mean, yeah, I mean, every year I go for my vitality assessment. Um, I'm a, I mean, I'm a gym bunny. I just, you know, don't, I don't look like, your typical gym bunny, you know, I am a gym bunny. You, you look and like I'll our go, typical gym bunny. What yeah, I get, I get say? Could, could you come a little closer get, to the camera? What is, could you, you're wearing this amazing Diamante sash. Um, if, you, if you could just, okay, what is it? Sir? Can you see it now? Yep, Body by Emmet. I mean, that's absolutely fabulous. And you wore that on the yeah. beach. Body is by Emmet. Um, I worked hard to get this sash. Um, yes, you Nick did. gave it to me. One year, um, I suppose he thought I deserved it. <laughs> well, you, I mean, um, you, you were deadlifting like a champion. It was unbelievable. So, um, yeah, so every year I go for my vitality assessment and every year I get the same sort of nonsense report. Okay, so I'm uh, currently 52 years old and I'm on no medication whatsoever. Nothing. I mean, does that... I mean, that's an indicator of health, wouldn't you say? Good health, no, right? No, absolutely. But what, did they, what does Discovery tell you? Well, um, Discovery tells me that I'm obese and that I need to exercise more and I'm at high risk of, you know, disease, nonsense like that. It's absolute nonsense. I, I mean, I go further to say that it's, it's body shaming. It's absolute body shaming. BMI is... A trashy measurement. It's simply taking your heart divided by your weight, I think it is. I mean, what is that an indicator? I mean, what, what is that exactly? So anyone who's got muscle or does, doesn't sort of fit the, you know, um, a runner's build is going to have a shocking BMI. It's not to say runners are healthy. So, yeah, I mean, every year I just sort of ignore it and move on with my life. But, you know, I, I don't agree with that assessment. Yeah, but the truth is that, you know, I've sorted stuff out in my head. Most people don't have stuff sorted out in their head. And if you, if you went for, a, you know, an assessment and you got those kind of feedback, you're obese and, you know, you're not good enough and, you know, you're never going to crack it like the way you are, which is basically what's been presented to you. Um, yeah, you can, look, I, I know just, Choose it. I mean, I sometimes used to get very angry, but now it just bounces right off you. Just let it bounce right off you. Don't buy into diet culture. Just don't. It's possible to be healthy at every size. You know, your body doesn't need to conform to um, Instagram measurements, you know, like what gym people look like on Instagram. For you to be healthy, for you to enjoy exercise. I mean, exercise is a joy in life. It's something that can give you a lot of pleasure. It's something, it's got so many benefits, you know. It, it just makes you happy and, um, you yeah, know, just something that it's social and it's just wonderful. And to reduce it to something that will make your body smaller or look better, I think it's really, a, it's not what it's about. You know, you, you can just look anyway. You don't have to arrive at gym. You know, I know some people go, I'll go to gym. When my body is smaller, once I've lost weight, you know, when I look better in a gym outfit, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. You're just fine as you are. Come to gym anyway. I mean, what's the difference? You've got to do the best you can. It's good enough. It's good enough. Just show up at a gym. Well, I mean, we can't go to gym anymore. Walk around. Do something, you know. You can walk, walk out to with Nikki in your home via WhatsApp. <laughs> Thank you for the punt, Mesh. And on that yeah. note, so I, I have a surprise for you. Did you know that this tonight's show is sponsored? 
and we have <laughs> that. yeah and it's sponsored because i mentioned you were coming on the show and what you stood for what you believed and the fact that we would be speaking about body positivity so i got hold of the good folks at sally williams nougat or sally williams <laughs> deliciousness absolutely because that is food for the soul. It's just, it just, you know, if you want to give yourself a treat and a reward, you sit down with a Sally Williams or three, whether it's their eggs or their nougat. And I said to them, this is what we're going to be talking about. Would you like to sponsor the show? And they jumped at it because it is food, food, you know, maybe we can get a little bit into mindful eating. When you eat yeah. it mindfully, it just tastes so much better. And you know, exercise is not a punishment for what no. we ate. You yeah. know, and food is a reward. It's an amazing connection. It's a way to plug yeah. in with others and to connect with others and family. And it's unbelievable. So, Mish, the podcast I finally got you on is sponsored by Sally Williams. Good for you, Sally, you Williams. Sally Williams. There okay, we go. I'm going to talk to you about like. Um, you know, say Sally Williams, right? So high sugar food stuff, right? So a diet mentality would go, you know, evil, evil. Stay away from it. It'll kill you. It'll, you know, blow you up. It'll trigger your sugar addiction. You know, it, it, you know all that stuff like sugar addiction is worse than cocaine addiction and all this absolute trash. No, it isn't. So here's how it works in real life. You know, and you'll know this. If you someone who's been a dieter, you, you're going to understand this. So you you think, all right, I um, there's Sally Williams over there, and there's a rice cake over here, right? So what what does diet culture say? Yo, bro, eat. You know, have three rice cakes with a bit of cottage cheese because nutritionally, you know, that's a better choice, right? Well, actually. There's a whole other aspect to it, and I think that most dietitians don't get this. Um, there's the, the, the there's a whole psychological aspect which is completely discounted. You know, if you want a piece of Sally Williams nougat, I know you use the word as a reward. It is not a reward. It's simply something. It is simply a food stuff. There's not good food and evil food. There's just food. So um, it's, it's useful just to neutralize all food. It's just food. It's, yeah, that's all it is. If you want a piece of Sally Williams nougat, you can eat it. You can eat it for breakfast if that's what you really, really want. And you yes, can eat I, it I, that, Yes, please. I, 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 yeah, I, I want, I want Sally Williams for breakfast. Go, go for it, Nick. And, you know, people think, well, if they eat one piece of Sally Nugar, uh, Williams Nougat for breakfast, well, that's the end of their life. They're going to want Sally New, um, Williams Nougat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's not true. Your body, you can trust your body. Your body will eventually go, I've had enough of Sally Williams Nougat. That was great. But I'd really like to eat, I don't know, a carrot or, you know, I'd like to eat some salad or I'd like a piece of steak, whatever it is. You know, so it's about um, intuitive eating is about being able to trust your body, that it knows what it wants, that you can trust it, that you're not going to spend the rest of your life like eating chocolate and, you know, I don't know, the cake. You, you, you know, you can trust your body that if you allow it to make good choices for you, sometimes it's going to want to eat cake. Most of the time, it's just going to want like some neutral, simple food, you know. Um, the thing that I love about it is that it's, it's just about eating for pleasure, which diet culture stole from me, stole from me for, for, for so many years. There was so much like, guilt attached to it. And, you know, the funny, you, you talk about no, diet culture. Oh, sorry. sorry, Mesh. No, I'm saying that there's not enough, there's, you know, the pleasure of food is detached or, or diet culture cuts you off from the pleasure of eating and food. And intuitive eating brought that back for me. And the, the thing when you are dieting and depriving yourself, that is when you're going to eat all of those new gars and dive into the fridge because you have the guilt and the shame. You're going, well, I've broken it already. I might as well just go. 
huge, mm. you know, and mm. you don't, when, when you're like, this is what I try to explain to people with cheesecake or whatever, you know, eat it, enjoy it, be present, be mindful, be focused mm. on it. Mm. So, uh, yeah. You mentioned you had pleasure of it. the pleasure of it, which is amazing. And food mm. is amazing. And when there's nothing attached to it, no guilt, no shame, no secrecy, no stealing, it's unbelievable. Mm. Simple foods. Yeah. Mesh, mm. Are there other, anything else that you would like to mention and talk about? Um, did I mention children? I think I just stopped. Mm. I, I mentioned it just briefly. You know, I know parents want to do what's best for their children, but um, putting them on diets. So can, them can, I, can I come in here with that? Sometimes it, parents want to do what's best for their children but they're basing that on their own fear and anxieties that they don't want yeah. their children to have that, but that's what mm. they end up perpetuating. Sorry, Mesh. Mm. So I would say to parents that um, your child and your job with your child is to um, help them to develop their self-esteem. Your job is not to make your child fit. This is not your job. Do not put your child on a diet. Do not comment on their body and how the body needs to change. Do not wake them up at, you know, six o'clock in the morning to go for a run so that they will, um, you know, become thin if they're a runner. You know, I, I just really, this is just not a good way to go. This is not a good way to go. If anything, I mean, obviously, you know, if you do that once or twice, it's no big deal. But, I mean, if it's um, hammered home, it creates eating disorders. The problem with eating disorders, you know, people go, do you think you get an eating disorder if you still be thin or whatever? I mean, well, you may get an eating disorder and not be thin. But the problem with it is that um, they've actually, eating disorders have got the highest death rates of any of the, the mental illnesses. Or they've got amongst the highest death rates. It's a serious problem in eating disorder. You know, um, so I just, you know, love your children and, you know, encourage a, self, a healthy self-esteem, not thinness. This is not your job. That's and I'm it. saying that if you've got issues with your own weight, because that's usually what's happening. The parent has got issues. Then sort your own weight issues out. Don't inflict them on your children. Absolutely. And, and that is the big thing. You know, the, the, the fear and the anxiety of the parent gets dumped on the kid. Well-intentioned, mm. well but that's why we go through cycles and cycles. Mish, what, what, what was the switch for you, the turning point of moving away from diet culture? Well, you know, um, I think it's sort of similar to alcoholism. Like, you know, like you've got it in a kind of a rock bottom. So maybe your rock bottom is diet, you know, 300. Maybe your rock bottom is, um, you know, now you're trying, you know, intermittent fasting and your weight's going up. Or maybe you went for a vitality assessment and you thought, well, I am obese. Maybe I should see a dietitian. And you go to the dietitian and you fail again, again. How many times can you do this to yourself? Eventually, you just got to go enough. It's enough. So I don't know what you know what that was specifically, um, but yeah, I just eventually reached a point where I just went, I will never ever go on a diet again for any reason. No way, not going to do it. And um, yeah, and then sort of, I had, I mean, years ago, I went to a course called uh, something like "Food Does Not Make You Fat." And it sort of um, suggested that you should eat when you're hungry and stop when you're full. I was wow. like, oh, that's interesting. I mean, I hadn't been brought, I mean, I wasn't brought up with that. I was brought up with eat the vegetables because they're good for you and don't eat the cake because it's bad for you. Um, so that eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full um, had an appeal. You know, easier said than done, I'll tell you that much. And, um, but there's another part to it. The other part that actually is 
for me the success glue is that don't think if you eat when you're hungry and you stop when you're full that you'll necessarily be thin. So it's about accepting the body as it is. You were born with a body. Thank God, you know, our bodies are, he- or please God, are well and healthy and to be grateful for that. And that's all there is to it. That it doesn't conform to the standards is okay. It's okay. You can get by. You can have a wonderful, happy, successful, um, blessed, um, giving life without having a perfect body. It's okay. It's okay. I know there's not a lot around you to suggest that and to reinforce that for you, but I'm speaking the truth to you. You don't need a perfect body for a perfect life. But it's interesting that firstly, what is a perfect body? And we usually find those telling us that our bodies need to be a certain way are trying to sell us something. They're trying to sell us a gym membership, a personal training. You need to look this way to go, you know, beach body, dad bod, get beach ready, you know, a dietitian, uh, you know, these things. You know, if you have a medical condition where you lack certain things and need to eat certain foods because you have a disorder physically, nutritionist mm. but like what diet what is the point of dietitians telling you that you you pay someone to tell you repeatedly that you're not good enough yeah look you know i guess they've got their place you know like say you've got um you, you know maybe you've got diabetes or you've got yes. a but that's what i'm saying but yeah that's a nutritionist where you have a medical condition you yeah, you they can food as medication that is just about you losing weight. I mean, it's, it's iniquitous. It's simply iniquitous. They are trying to sell you a 95% failure rate and lead you to believe that you're the problem. You're not. You know, it's you're like, not. yeah, it's an alcoholic who stops drinking but doesn't fix what's inside. Because even if yeah. you th- what you believe or perceive to be thin and look the right way in what you believe you've been told, if you don't mm-hmm. fix what's inside, it's still broken, irrespective of what you look like. And our quality of life comes from that. How we mm-hmm. feel about ourselves, you said, you know, self-worth, value comes from inside, not external. Yeah, I mean, you can, I mean, I actually once started writing a book. Um, awesome. But then I decided I don't feel like writing it. It's called, it was called... Um, Refuse to weigh your self-esteem. Sure. So you, you want to de-link your esteem from your weight. They just they don't have to be linked. You, right. You're of tremendous value, you know, no matter what the scale says. I mean, my, my suggestion is just never get on a scale again. I mean, if you have to have your vitality assessment, just get on the scale backwards. Tell your healthcare provider you've got no interest in knowing the number and not to show you. And you don't have to deal with it again. Because the problem of the scale is, you know, if you put if you think you weigh a certain amount and now you weigh two kilos more, I mean, it's it, 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 it's it's just terrible, you know, and whatever. Like whatever. Your weight went up, your weight went down. You know, when the weight goes down, you think, oh, I'm a, you know, I've got value and I'm such an achiever and, you know, life is good. And it's not just nonsense. It's just nonsense. Just avoid the scale. If it's a trigger for you, just avoid it. What would, you, what would you say to someone that's sitting with the feeling that their, their weight, their size, their, determines their value? I would say speak the truth. Just speak the truth. Awesome. Awesome. And to someone... Nothing to do with the other. The one has absolutely nothing to do with the other. You know, I would say, you know, there are people who love you. Um, What do they love about you? What do you love about you? What makes you an interesting person? I mean, you know, it's just got nothing to do with your weight. If you help people, it's got nothing to do with your weight. If you feel happy. It's, what's it going to do with your weight? Nothing. It doesn't matter. 
it's it's you know no one ever said about someone in their eulogy sure they lost so much weight they were looking amazing when they died you know they speak <laughs> about the value that you you brought to people in this world you know they were yeah. kind they were gentle they were giving they were a good parent not oh they were thin hey we only had to use two pole bearers you know yeah that's the heartbreaking yeah. point. So, Mesh, yeah. we've hit 32 minutes. Oh, wait, we've got to end. Yep. So, for those of you who don't know, Mesh has been my longest serving, hopefully not suffering, client at the gym. I tell people <laughs> repeatedly, repeatedly, that the only reason I have a business is because of Michelle. Because Mesh will not do the same uh, exercise twice. And when we get a new coach, after the coach is trained, we give them to Michelle. If they live, we offer them a job. <laughs> so no, <laughs> you've been amazing. And it just, um, I, the thing that I miss the most, and I'm grateful to get some of it while we're training virtually, is our conversations in the gym. Because you are smart, you are insightful, you're intelligent. But above all, Miss, you tell it as it is, and you take no BS. So I'm really grateful to have you on here. And I hope, one, we don't get sued by the medical aid we discussed. And, um, but it's fine. I know a good publicist. And, um, you know, I just, I'd love to have you back. Uh, and th there's a lot more to talk about. Maybe next time we could talk about your other favorite subject, death. <laughs> Nick, um, yeah, just thanks to Sally Williams. That is just yeah. amazing. Good hey. for you, Sally Williams, new guy. And um, Nick, thanks to you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, we've been training together. It's nearly, it'll be eight years in October. Yep. And um, it's, yeah, it's just, it's just amazing. I can only recommend uh, Nick's training, um, you know, it's, it, it, he's good. He is so good. Oh, so thank good. You, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, like there's two things I value about October that are very important to me. One, our training anniversary, and two, it's the month of my sobriety. So it's two very uh, important parts of my life. So, yeah. so Mish, we got Sally Williams Fine Food to sponsor the show because that, that's, a brand, that's a brand with Seichel. Hey, I love it. With, with it with <laughs> so, Mish, thank you so much. And, uh, we hope, to have you back. we hope to have you back soon. Okay, thanks, Nick. Cheers. All the best. Bye. Bye.